Hey up lads and lasses, Damfire here, and we are back with some more Infinite Lagrange. Uh, so today, we are looking at uh, another tier list. That way. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so thank you to Spatial Monk, he sent me um, all of these over, uh, so it was nicely organised for me, uh, which made this a lot, lot easier to uh, get out to you guys. So yeah, big shout out to Spatial Monk. Uh, for sending me uh, a lot of these. I don't have that many. He's got all of them. <laughs> anyway, this is all the frigates, all variants for the frigates uh, that are in the game. So we're going to go through each one and rank them accordingly. Um, I can't really get other pictures of the other frigates because they all look pretty much identical um, so these are all the same but what will happen is uh, same as last time I'll have up on screen nice little thing for you so you can see all of the um, bits and instead of just rotating around I am clicking on uh, the major parts of them so usually the weapon system so First up, we're going to go through the FG, FG 300 because it'd be nice, quick, and easy. So first up, we have the FG 300 multi roll. So the multi roll is the first ship you get. It does its job fairly well at the start of the game. It very much drops off very, very quickly and becomes uh, completely useless here. Uh, with that bearing in mind, we're going to go uh, C tier. Just something quickly to note: I am going to be working on the same fact that. If it's a damage type and it is a low end of the damage type, so it's more of like a rapid fire, that's going to get ranked low because armor is the prevalent force in the game dictating what kind of weapons you should be using. Energy, very high alpha damage ships. These rapid fire ships aren't that useful to you. Next up, we have the armored version of the FG300. Now, out of all the variants, there are only two defensive uh, frigates, which means that the armored variant of the FG300 is A tier because you do need some armored frigates uh, if you're running a fleet with just everything in it. You are going to need something to be able to tank for your other frigates if the enemy has something that prioritizes frigates. That means that the armored FG300 is still relevant right up till the end game. So A tier for the uh, FG300 armored, it is a bit crap, it hasn't got the best weapons, but because it is armored and it does have reduced damage, well, increased reduced damage from uh, kinetic weapons, uh, it's gotta be up near the top. We then have the recon. Now I've added a little situational thing down here and I think I'm gonna put most of the recons in the, uh, of which there's two, so there's not gonna be much down there. So these are extremely useful, but useless in a fleet. So the idea of a recon ship uh, is to obviously explore the region and stuff like that, but it's to get to an operation faster than your fleet, so your fleet can then warp to the operation. This also lets you, you know, move miners, so you can, you know, fly your recon, warp your miner to it, fly your recon, warp your miner to it, and do the step uh, process to try and get your miner into a better position uh, to build an outpost to move your base or, you know, whatever. Again, it'll explore as well, so it's going to discover bits and pieces as you do at the very start of the game. That obviously becomes less useful later on. And yeah, so it's it's situational. It's very, very useful. You should have some. You should have maybe two, three, however many you want. But they shouldn't be in your combat fleets at all. They should not be uh, touching those. And that is the FG300. So next up, uh, we have... Uh, we're going to do the Nomas, I think, next. Because uh, I have them up here ready to go. So we have the siege type, and yeah, uh, yeah, same as last time, really. It's um, trash. Its damage output is still terrible. Um, I've had, I've tested it as well. I've even got experience onto mine to pump into that siege UAV, UAV system, and it's still, it's, it just doesn't do anything. Honestly, it really doesn't. My standard FG three hundred, the multi uh, roll one with the similar sort of XP range, 
does more damage to outposts and bases than the Noma does. So yeah, this, this thing is still bugged. I, I guess it's bugged. It's either bugged or it is just absolute dirt trash. So at the moment, yeah, don't build them, not worth it. We then have a rather, rather interesting variant though. And this kind of makes getting that first Noma a little bit less salty. We have a support variant. Now, supports are pretty rare in the game, uh, especially of the healer variant. I think there's only three of them uh, that I found so far anyway. And that means that they're probably going to all be S tier. So the Noma in a weird position because it is a frigate. It's going to get shot pretty quickly and easily if there is something prioritizing frigates and it's going to die very rapidly. But it is healing the rest of your ships and if you have these tank frigates in front of it, it's going to be able to uh, help them. It's going to be able to heal them and keep them alive longer, keeping your front line safe, potentially keeping your DPS safer for longer. So it's an S tier. So there we go. The polar opposite, the siege in D and the support in S. We then have an anti-air variant of the Noma. Again, it's like a billion times more useful than the standard variant, the siege variant. So again, this is again going to be above it. So the UAV on this is a anti-air variant, which means it's going to be targeting fighters, corvettes and bombers. In a lot of situations, it's not particularly useful until much later in the game when you start seeing carriers. I believe pirates level 8 are carriers, and obviously other players late game when they're getting their CV-3000s out. But even earlier for players, because it is quite often, they will run other carriers. Pirates as well, actually. Um, I think uh, I think level 4s have like a mini carrier that has a couple of corvettes or something in it. So. These will specifically go in a target and kill off those corvettes and fighters and bombers, which is extremely useful. Now, ideally, they'd have another weapon system on here to be able to back them up and be able to dish out some damage. In this version of the Noma, that is not there. It's literally all about this UAV that can go kill off fighters and bombers. That does bring it down a bit. Uh, and it does make it quite situational, but it's not like a recon situational. So I believe this is going to be potentially C tier. It's high C tier. So we're going to put that there. So left to right, best to worst in the in the tiers as well. So bear that in mind. We are now moving on. We have the Ner Mer Nubium. So first off, there is another uh, Siege variant. Thankfully, though, this comes with a slightly better weapon system, but it's still pretty trash. Uh, as far as I know, the Siege uh, UAV pod just they don't seem to be working properly. I'm not sure what's going on with them. Um, I haven't actually mentioned it to the devs yet. I should probably mention it to the devs that they've got some issue there. So. It's going in D tier, it's going top of D tier. It is better than the Noma because it has the missile system, which is a rocket doing 60 damage uh, on a hit, which is just flat out better than what the Noma can do. And that's pretty much the only reason it's there. We then have a slightly more interesting variant. We have another anti-air. Now, the benefit of this anti-air is it does come with that uh, missiles as well, which do 50 damage per hit, uh, which is reduced from 60, I believe, from the Siege variant. So again, it's up there with the Noma. Uh, it's probably ahead of the anti-aircraft variant of the Noma. And yeah, C tier. Next up, we are looking at the Xeno Stingers. Now, here we get into some very, very high damaging ships. So the base Xeno Stinger, the special variant, comes with the Stinger UAV system. Now, the UAV system launches four UAVs, each of them doing an absurd amount of damage. Uh, with buffs and setup, it's over 10,000 damage per minute. And yeah, it's a hell of a lot of damage. 
that being in mind that does put it in the s tier just to note as well those uavs are energy damage which means they will be ignoring armor for the most part and only have to worry about energy resistances and that's a percentage decrease on the damage and if yeah it, it, they're just very very good energy is still probably s or a tier in this situation this is s tier for certain for this ship we then have the other Sino Stinger variant, the anti-aircraft type. Now this is an interesting one because it has the Stinger UAV defense system, which launches instead of the other uh, UAVs on the Noma and the Nubia, um, actually launches four anti-air UAVs, which means it's better in that role just flat out. Unfortunately, it's got no other weapons at all and well it's got the generic cannons i guess but they're, they're like 15 damage which probably puts it in a position down here it is however probably better than the other anti-air variants having no second weapon though does kind of stick it in a bad position but because it's so dedicated to anti-air with extra uavs to tackle anti-air in comparison to the other two it is probably going to be ranked a little bit higher, so I will put it into C tier. That's it for the Xeno Stinger. It's odd that some only have like two, three variants, and then others are like three variants. I'm not sure if there's more to come, and we're waiting on more to turn up, but uh, not sure yet. We then have the Mer Serenitus. Now you can grab this from the big box and you've got a pretty good chance of grabbing it. It comes with a very, very useful anti-ship doing uh, a little bit upgraded, six and a half thousand damage per minute with a massive damage per hit of 400 uh, damage on a single hit, which does mean that it is actually not a bad ship. It does also come with some cannon systems. Um, I'm not sure what these are meant to be doing. I think they are. Yeah, they are anti air so it is uh, relying on a bit more of like a anti-ship with a massive torpedo uh, able to deal with cruisers and even battle cruisers to an extent so it can hit hard and it is one of the better dpm ships with that bearing in mind i'm probably going to put it in b tier because there are just flat out better um better ones so you're probably going to be one of running those in a and s tier so b tier uh for that one we then have the next variant which is the missile type now this one unfortunately forgoes the massive damage torp and gets some very well not reasonably damaged missiles 160 damage each there's two lots of these so yeah it's okay. It'll do well against destroyer and uh, frigate fleets, cruisers to an extent as well, but from that point onwards, it does fall off, so it's not going to be useful against your battle cruisers and such. Uh, with that bearing in mind, it's C tier. Um, it's probably better than those. Yeah, it is better than those. That is the top of the Annie. Yeah, that's the. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. We then have the other Mer Serenitus, which is another anti-air variant. It's going to get very complicated very quickly. There is a lot of anti-air in the frigate line, and I'm not sure why. There is also a lot in the cruiser line as well. So This comes again. It drops its lovely giant massive torpedoes of doom for, yeah, a pretty uh, okay at best. Um, uh, missile system it is anti-air it does shoot four missiles per thing and there is two of them so that's eight missiles going for your corvettes and frigates however fighters have most of the evasion buffs specifically against missiles and torpedoes if you go onto a fighter and look in propulsion and stuff like that you'll see evasion like just a flat base evasion and then you'll see things like chance to evade missiles and torps and it's almost always higher than any of the projectiles so with that bearing in mind it's probably not as good as the uav systems so it's going to go at the bottom of the aircraft anti-air variants we are then moving on to the ruby and oh my god ruby 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 is absolutely ridiculous i thought that the base variant was just crazy um yeah 
And then Spatial sent me like some of these variants and I just went, what the absolute hell are these? So, the railgun variant. Got a telescopic railgun doing 500 damage per hit. Huge chunky damage. It's very cheap to put into fleets. It's like a five command cost. You can just swarm these, no issue. The generic battery uh, system on it is anti-air specifically, means it's not so good, but you are just looking for that massive chunky damage. It does bring it. It's A tier. Now, this is where this is where it gets a bit crazy. There's an ion cannon variant. It's a mini IO. And it it's it's as crazy as it sounds. It does 357 damage per hit. Right? With a uh, attack duration of five seconds and upgraded, as you can see at the moment, it's got a 2.8 second interval. Every 2.8 se uh, seconds, it's doing, with this upgraded version, 464 damage. Energy damage. So it's just a slight percent decrease on cruisers and above. Everything below that is going to melt. So yeah, pretty crazy. It gets slightly better. It does also have anti-air capabilities with increased targeting for its main weapon system. And then a plasma converter increasing all ion damage by another 15%. Yeah. And it's it's top S tier. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Top S tier for 100% certain. We then have the other um, ridiculous version of the Ruby. Sorry if I keep looking that way. It's where my second screen is and I've got all the, the game up. So I'm going through the information with you guys. Um, it's a defensive type, right? It foregoes the main weapon system, so it loses the railgun or the ion. It gains a torpedo system, which does 216 damage to hit uh, per hit, which is reasonable, right? And then you look at the reinforced armor system. It comes with more evasion, and it self repairs itself. It has a nano repair system that heals itself it doesn't need anything else to heal it it can do it itself this thing is absolutely ridiculous upgraded it's pushing 46 armor which does put it in the position of basically being the same tank as a cruiser fair enough it doesn't necessarily bring as much damage as those but this thing's healing itself as well if you get this and you're running frigates as damage per second and damage per minute, this is the ship you want at the very front of your fleet, tanking everything for you. As you can see, you can just quite easily just build rubies and yeah, you're good. That's your frigate spam done and then you can work on your crews and stuff like that and you're sorted. The rubies are all very, very powerful ships. The Ion and the Defensive exceptionally strong for their role and task. And the Railgun, again, very strong still. Not quite as good as the Ion or the Defensive. Uh, it's probably as good as the Defensive, but in the role it has, uh, and because it's kinetic damage, it's slightly worse. We are then moving over to the Relia. This is another interesting one. So the anti-ship version of the Relia is a solid B tier. Now the reason for this is because it has cluster torpedoes, which are quite nice, doing 35 damage. Uh, four, it fires four missiles doing that split into five, and each five of those does 35 damage each. Now because it is this lower end of damage, it does get hit pretty hard by armor, very very quickly however it's firing there's two lots of these so yeah it's 20 times 35 times 2 if you want to try and do that calculation be my guess <laughs> but it's yeah it's it because of armor it'd be ranked higher if it did better and there is a better version of it so that's why i'm ranking it b 
So for B, oh sorry, for the other variant, we have the Torpedo variant. Now this comes with the Roland Iron Dwarf Energy Torpedo System. Yes, it's a torpedo, that's energy. This is Star Trek, this is your photon torpedoes. So, 120 damage uh, each, it uh, does five of those, so 120 times five. Two of those, so you double that again, 12.6 uh, second fire rate. Also comes with a rapid fire pulse cannon, which is anti-air, so it can defend against well against air, so fighters and bombers and uh, corvettes. And it's an energy weapon, easily able to deal with um, a hell of a lot of enemies in general because you don't see energy resistances until cruisers. That does put it in a solid A tier. Last but not least for the Reliats, we have the Stealth version. So the Stealth version is quite an interesting one. It comes with the Stealth Torpedo System, which is a special cluster variant again. Now this cluster variant, unlike the one I put into B tier, does 240 damage per hit. Five times, two of them, yeah. This thing can absolutely shred and chunk through enemies like nobody's business. Even if this gets mitigated by um, armor completely, it's still gonna be dealing 21 times five. So well over 100 damage times two, 200 damage. So this thing, even against heavily armored uh, ships, it's very, very strong. Now to top that off, it also comes with a very interesting uh, system called the Field Camouflage System. Now the Field Camouflage System literally reduces the chance of being hit by 30% of torpedoes and missiles, increase evasion by 30%, and you can even add in 20% and 15% uh, direct fire and missile uh, chance to dodge. So. Very, very, very difficult to move and get rid of because it just, you, you miss it all the time. It's a very, very cool ship. I really like this one. I kind of wish there was more of these special versions with these cool little um, subsystems that like add to much more of a tactic when building a fleet. Like, could you imagine a fleet that was like all these stealth variant systems? So you just had this fleet that was just capable of like dodging everything and anything. That would have been awesome. So we then have the Carillions. So we're talking about a recon again. It is just flat out better than the FG300. Its weapons are slightly better, but more importantly, it moves slightly faster. It is situational. Again, I'm not going to discuss it again because it is basically an FG300, just slightly better. Or the recon version of the FG300 anyway. We then have the heavy cannon variant. Now, this is actually not bad. It's a 300 damage per hit, two rounds times one. Uh, with a 14 second attack interval, that's at base, so upgraded. It's going to have a pretty rapid attack. Now on top of that, it does have a near defense system, which is pretty much just anti-air, 10 damage. Yeah, yeah, it's not that great. But the big cannon on the front of it, it's not bad. It's not on par with the Ruby's railgun system. So it is into B tier. It's probably better than the base rally at. Is it better than the base Mer? No, I don't think it is. So. We then have the last of the Carillions, and that is another anti-air system. Now this does come with a special warning system, increasing um, hit rate from torps and missiles. I'm not sure if this applies to the entire fleet or if only if it's being targeted. Either way, that does make it slightly more tanky because it is gonna be dodging um, missiles and torps and direct fire weapons a little bit, while being able to provide pretty decent anti-air fire with a 35 damage three rounds per second uh, every five seconds and that's not upgraded so it can definitely fill the role of anti-air if needed it does put it at the top of anti-air um yeah for now because again direct fire weapons less of a problem for um well, more of a problem for fighters and bombers. We have the Mer Tranquillitatis. 
One day I'll get that name right. This thing, <laughs> we have the integrated type. It has the eternal launcher system, which has, uh, yeah, it's a triple fire rocket system. It's not that great. Integrated uh, cannons, uh, also not that great. This is pretty pants. In my opinion, there are just flat out better ships uh, that you can get. Albeit, you can get this one slightly more easily because it is in the larger 700 cost box, but so is the Mer. Uh, the whatever that one was called. Nubium? No, that's the other one. There's too many Mers. They should rename them. Either way, uh, yeah. There is a flat out better version uh, that you can potentially get, so into C, its weapons are meh, and it's just not worth it. We then have the second variant, which is very, very much worth it. It's a anti-air pulse cannon variant, which does mean that it's going to absolutely and utterly annihilate most anti-air that is around, because pretty much none of the corvettes and fighters have any energy damage mitigation. So yeah, this might th be only doing, uh, what is it? 20 damage, there's two of them every two seconds, but they can't do much about it. And it's going to hit, and it's gonna just hit often and fast. It's gonna knock aircraft out of the sky. So with that in mind, is it better than a Carillion? Uh, yes. It's slightly better than the Carillion. These are about on par, really, the anti-air Carillion and uh, the Mer Tranquilatus. Um, Tranquilitatus. <laughs> that one. Uh, they're about on par, really. There's really not much in it. We then have the anti-air variant of it, which is a bit odd to say, isn't it? That there's an energy version, but that's specifically anti-air. And now there's another version that is directly anti-air. This is mostly based around its um, anti-air rockets uh, that it has. And it's also got the generic cannon system, also providing slightly more anti-air in that position as well. Again, because missiles and stuff have issues hitting, it's probably... Yeah, it's probably at the back down here somewhere. Uh, the UAV systems, anti-air, probably better. Yeah, I reckon also C tier. So, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, it's a little bit interesting one. Again, I'm sorry I couldn't get any better pictures or any way to sort of define these slightly better, but uh, there will be some cool little video pop up on your screen showing you what I'm talking about. Either way, Get yourself Rubies, the Xeno Stinger, the Noma Support's good, the FG300 Armoured, again, there's only two uh, defensive uh, frigates within the game, so definitely worth trying to uh, using them. And again, Ruby, it, the Ruby is basically god tier. It's got three variants, all of them A tier, two of them S tier, it's crazy. Xeno Stinger, again, even if you get the anti-air variant, it's still good, it's still useful, and it makes a, you know, it's it's good in situations. And two Reliots up there, the Stealth and the Energy Variant, both very, very strong. So yeah, actually some good frigates. These can be used till end game quite happily, and like, no issue at all. They do provide the damage, and the rolls are very, very useful in the uh, case of the defensive variants. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe because it helps me out and it helps the channel out. We are approaching 1000 subs, which is absolutely crazy. I think I'm at like 812 or something at the moment, which I never thought was actually possible. Um, so thank you guys for all the support over the last, um, I think I've been doing YouTube now for like almost a year, like 11 months. I think it's 11 months this year uh, or this month. So yeah, thank you guys for all the support. It's been great uh, chatting to you in the comments and on my Discord, Discord link down in the description below. Definitely come hang out and chill. Um, and yeah, have a good one guys, and I'll catch you next time.